Hi yo, welcome back to Imagine Your Odyssey. And today I want to talk about stabilizers. Not just any kind of stabilizers, the ones that are on travel trailers. If yours has these types back here, you know, the kind that you have to crank down, I just wanted to bring to you some of the things that you need to watch for and how they're supposed to actually be used. When you look up stabilizers on the internet, you may find a bunch of different things. Now, some call them stabilizer jacks, some call them jack stands, scissor jacks, and they're all kinds of things. But I'm telling you, they're not jacks. They are stabilizers only. They're intended uses for only stabilizing your RV. Now, you put down the pressure, you set it up so that the inside doesn't wiggle around. Now, hold on with me because we're going to do a test in the end just to see how that looks. But yet, when you put them down, don't keep cranking on them to lift up your RV because you will damage them. You will damage them and or you will damage your RV too. So when you put them down, put down just enough pressure to stabilize your RV, not jack up one side or the other or the front or the rear. So a couple of things that could happen if you put too much pressure on them, they could fold and break. It means they could fold over, break in half and damage your RV. Another thing that can happen is if you crank up on them too high on one side or the other, you can actually take a chance in bending the frame of your RV itself. You know that I-beam that runs underneath your floor of your travel trailer. When it comes to leveling your RV, you need to take the time and put in all the effort in the beginning to get it leveled as best as you can. So that means you got to put something underneath the wheels on one side to lift up that side of your travel trailer and then up and down on the nose to level the front and back. Then take your time to get that as accurate as possible. That way you don't have to use your leveling system in order to try to jack up one side or the other of your travel trailer and save any kind of headaches down the road. For example, our travel trailer is 26 feet long. We do have this type of stabilizers that you have to crank down. We have the two in the front and the two in the back. Now, we don't have a whole lot of issues with stabilization inside of our RV just because of a few things. There's a ton of different products out there that you can use to help with stabilization, but here's just a couple of things that we do. Now, we get our RV as level as possible, side to side, front and back. Then after that, we put down our stabilizers. When we put down our stabilizers, we get enough pressure on them so that the inside doesn't move around. Like I said, we'll show in the end of the video a little test of what it looks like with the stabilizers up and then with them down. Another thing that we do is we use a product called X-Chocks. We put those between the front and the back tires on each side of our RV, which helps with stabilization as well. Our stabilizers on the front and the back are actually set up so that the stabilization side to side is taken care of. But the stabilization from the front to the rear is not all that great. So we put the x tox in. And what that does is it locks down the wheels nice and tight so that the travel trailer doesn't go front and back, front and back, front and back. It holds it nice and secure. With that, it locks down our travel trailer nice and tight so that we don't have a lot of movement on the inside while we're walking around. Now I know some travel trailers are different. Yours may be slightly different than mine on how it stabilizes. What I mean by that is not necessarily how you set up your stabilizers, but how well your travel trailer stabilizes. I'm just giving you an example of how mine works and how well it stabilizes. Now just before we get into the test of showing you what it looks like with the stabilizers up and then with the stabilizers down, I want to take you real quick to the actual stabilizer itself and talk about a couple of key items to make sure that your stabilizers are properly set up. If you already own a travel trailer, you already know that your stabilizer goes up and down by that screw over there. Now there's a few different ways you can do that, but the way that it's supposed to be done when you buy your RV is they give you a handle inside it, you stick on the end of it and you crank it and you turn it so that you can send it down or send it up. Now a lot of people, what they'll end up doing is they'll end up buying one of these or most popularly, one of these. What they'll do is they'll stick it on there and they'll drive it down until it stops, adding more and more and more pressure depending on what they want to try to get out of their stabilizers. Now, this one here will add the most amount of torque. I can reach in and put on this thing and then crank down on it as tight as I want and get it to go as high as I want, but that's not what you want because you're going to end up damaging your RV and or your stabilizer. Often people will use a drill and they'll put it on there. That way you want to save time, right? They'll stick the drill on there and they'll drive that thing down as fast as they can and then back up as fast as they can to try to save time. Both of these methods, if not used carefully, the drill and or the ratchet, 
can actually damage your RV as we spoke of before. Now, if you're going to do that method, be very careful about how much pressure you're putting them on there. Now, you remember what we were saying before, the stabilizer is there only to stabilize, not to jack up your RV. As a matter of fact, if you look on the sticker of the stabilizer itself, if yours is anything like mine, it actually states on there that if you use a power device like this and you go and mess up something, then the warranty is voided and any damages is on you. All right, now for the test. What I wanted to do is take a glass of water. I'm going to actually take this glass of water and I'm going to set it on the table for you and I'm going to put the camera on it. What I'm going to do first is take my stabilizers up and I'm going to come inside and kind of move the RV around walking, shaking and stuff like that. And you'll see the water starting to shake inside of the glass and see how well stabilized it is or at least what it looks like with the stabilizers up. We'll come back, put the stabilizers down, and you'll see what the results of that looks like as it's stabilized. All right, as you can see here, this is what it looks like with the stabilizers up. You can see the water shaking back and forth and all kinds of all over the place, right? And then right here, we put the stabilizers down, get everything locked in place, and you can see how much more solid it is. The water's not moving around in the cup as much. That is what the stabilizers are meant to do. Now, when I put down my stabilizers, I didn't go out there, crank them down, and try to level the RV with them. All I did is put them down, get them snug, and let them take care of what they do to stabilize my camper. So that just about sums up the video. And it's starting to get dark out here, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. But before I leave, and before you leave, if you could hang in there just for a minute, if you haven't subscribed to Imagine Your Odyssey yet, please do so now. And click on the little bell at the top so you get notified every time there's a video to come out. We love to create awesome, amazing, fun content for all of you out there. And if you click on the bell, click on the subscribe, you'll be sure to get some every single time we put one out. If you're already subscribed to Imagine Your Odyssey, thank you so much for being some of the elite members out there that have become part of our community. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Before we go, as always, enjoy your RV, keep things stable, and until the next time, God bless. It is 26 feet long. We have stabilizers on the front and the... Ah! People in their horns and their cars and their mufflers and everything else. Oh my!